We're now going to have um, Professor Simone. Now, interestingly, of course, John Topping in his speech touched on the fact that reducing CO2 alone is not sufficient to address climate change in the near term. And uh, Professor Simone is going to be speaking about the presence of black carbon in Antarctica with its high global warming potential, which is a great concern and its reduction as an important strategy for reducing global warming. <laughs> Thank for the chance to talk a little bit about the work in Antarctica and the question of black carbon. One of the greatest difficulties for the general public to understand climate change has been too much emphasis on the question of greenhouse gases. All the important factors are involved. And this is the case of black carbon that I'm going to talk a little bit now. So what, what is black carbon? First, it originates from the incomplete burning of biomass burning or fossil fuel and is basically formed by small high solar radiation absorbing particles. We know that they are spread from Arctic to Antarctica, elsewhere in the world. Uh, they are very tiny particles between 0.01 to 1 micron in the atmosphere. As Mr. Top told you, it, has, uh, it stays in the atmosphere just a couple of weeks, but it's available to disperse it at longer ranges. Uh, BC, or black carbon, belongs to short-lived pollutants. And then comes the most important point, is the second most important contributor to the global warming. In fact, the potential uh, of black carbon is estimated to have 55% of the radioactive forcing effect of carbon dioxide. The thing that we have in this picture here is the main uh, places that we have biomass burning at the moment, at, uh, at the year of 2009. As you can see, mainly in the subtropical and tropics, not only in South America, but also in Africa and Australia and uh, some countries uh, like Indonesia, Malaysia, and uh, others in Southeast Asia. So we can, uh, we can place the following question. How this kind of material can be transported to Antarctica? It seems a long way. Uh, for the last 10 years, we have changed our idea about the transport of air masses uh, from South America or from the tropics of South America to Antarctica. By now, we know that cyclonic activity is able to transport materials in a short uh, time in a week or so from the main areas of biomass burning to the south and then mainly to the northernmost part of Antarctica, that is the Antarctic Peninsula. Here I would like to do a point about uh, the impact uh, about the places that it is really happening this kind of biomass burning and transport into the south. It is happening, in fact, in the Brazilian savanna, known as Cerrado, and in the frontier between the savanna and Amazon forest. And uh, that is really related to the expansion of cash crops and cattle farm, a point that should be considered in the discussions this afternoon. So, cold air goes to the Amazon forest and biomass burning products to Antarctica. Do we, we have some evidences? That's a research result for the last uh, couple of years where we had at the same time atmospheric measurements and ice core, we collect cores, to measure black carbon in the northmost part of Antarctica. And what you can see in that graph, you have the red curve that are the number of uh, fire spots in the Amazon forest, or in the south part of the Amazon forest, and uh, at the same time, in the same snow and ice samples, we have uh, concentration of black carbon, and uh, it really goes together. We are having the transport of black carbon to Antarctica. Important, in the Himalayas, the increase is much higher threefold increase in black carbon from 1860 to 2000. The same thing has been observed in the Swiss Alps. And to finish with, uh, why it's important? Because black carbon impacts 
the surface of snow ice mass as it reduces the surf surface albedo, the proportion of uh, energy that's reflected by the surface. It is increased melting, trigger albedo feedback, changes the glacier mass balance, and contributes to glacier retreat. In short, black carbon is as important as atmospheric warming for the surf, uh, for melting surfacing of the glaciers. Thank you for the attention.